Whoa, that took a long time. Always worries me that does. I guess we can move it across there a bit. Eat. Right, no CRT glasses available, so let's hope that's lined up well. Now, I'm wearing the uh, Milo jumper today. Hey, what? Is it rapid fire on? Oh, yeah. It is. What the hell was I playing yesterday? Oh, yeah, that bullshit. Right. And why is it called the Milo jumper? You may well ask, sir. And I will tell you once I correct the uh, 9 to an 8. Well, that would help. You knob. It's a bit dark in here. I can't see the uh, label because it's a dark label on that one. Yeah, it's called the Milo Jumper because uh, I had a cat who... Uh, actually had four kittens uh, one of them was killed in very mysterious circumstances and I say killed because there was feathers in there in the room uh, and uh, one of those uh, kittens uh, my girlfriend at the time forced me to give away along with another one which I'd already agreed to give away with so I was only left with one out of the four actually the one that died sadly he or she I, I was too young to tell actually um, they, they were a very friendly cat the other three kittens would be playing with themselves but I used to call him Spunky I think it was something to do with uh, Rocco's Modern Life a cartoon I used to watch back then but yeah anyway uh, my niece called that cat Milo and uh, he used to apparently really like this jumper he was light grey and light grey uh, with a bit of white on him and uh, I don't know I suppose cats can still see uh, shades of grey the same as human beings right today potentially because I've switched off the fucking projector now I shouldn't have done that uh, we're going to be playing the C64 version of a game I never bought because uh, I'd already played it on the BBC Micro. Well, that is looking really, really quite terrible, sir. There go. Yeah, maybe that helped the situation a bit. Well, that looks good on the LCD. Where's the midpoint? So, we go just beyond the midpoint. Wow, that's dark. Uh, and it was a game called Fire Track by uh, Electric Dreams, aka uh, Activision. Maybe they uh, wanted to hide the fact. Actually, Activision games were not great after about I don't know '86, something like that. Activision's a good. C64 games are sort of like oh and it's not here is it because we've got Firebird Silverbird here so it wouldn't be in there ah bollocks uh, gonna have to fucking download it now ah well right after a bit of fucking about with game base 64 because, uh, of course, this is a T64 file. Uh, anyway, less said about that, the better. Wait, where's my tea? Tea, even though it's too hot in here, is a British thing. I can't explain it. It's a British thing. In the summer, you have warm cups of tea. I don't know. Maybe it's related to warm beer. I don't have any beer. I believe I have two bottles of cider from uh, Christmas 2019. Yeah, I told you I don't drink. <coughs> the whiskey is just for my teeth, which luckily are not playing up anymore. So, as I was saying, uh, I used to play this on the BBC Micro because uh, my computer science teacher was a filthy pirate. 
you had more pirated BBC Micro games than I had ST games even though my mate offered me uh, pirated games on the ST we gave uh, no but thank you Mr Pugsy again for your excellent uh, trainers I could have sworn there was music on the title page and the reason I didn't buy this game for my C64 is uh, not that it wasn't a good game but as you'll clearly see it's, uh, it's got BBC Micro Palette well that's a bit weird maybe I've completely forgotten that it auto fires for you and yeah, the music is actually okay it's quite funky not worth 10 quid though but uh, yeah I mean if you ever wondered what I'm talking about when I say BBC micro colors well here you go even the sprites are BBC micro colors ah, of course there's been no graphical update to this you yeah, know ghosts and goblins which needed fuck all effort doing to it with the graphics nah you know they spend half a year pissing about with that but uh, you know games like this Obviously it's much, uh, it's much smoother than the uh, BBC version, however, your 10 quid is buying your graphics, it's not just buying your gameplay and music, it's buying your graphics, and I'd say 50% of what you pay for is probably graphics, if the graphics are shit, then uh, I'm not interested, and nor were any of my friends to be quite honest. Apart from a few weirdos that fell in love with uh, Bruce Lee. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with this game. It's your standard shoot 'em up. It's no Crisis Force, which is a, a Famicom game, uh, which never got released on the NES, as far as I can work out. So you can't, so you can't blow the minds up. Um, but you know why why have you got these uh, colors I mean it's in multi-color mode and two of your colors can be any of the 16 colors so you know there's no need for fucking um, purple yellow blue white black these are the only colors you're gonna see And you could fucking convert this to the uh, VIC-20, just as, uh, well, not quite as good as a BBC. But. Now, the BBC Micro, in this screen mode, uh, can actually have eight colours. You know, anywhere next to each other. But you've only got eight colours anyway, so it's not really brilliant. It's a real shame, because it plays fine. And the music's fine, I've got no problem with it. It is literally like that rally game that I've done a couple of weeks ago. I would not pay 10 quid for this. This is a budget game, mate. BBC Micro Colours with uh, acceptable coding and uh, inoffensive music. That's a budget game. So, real shame. And it makes no sense at all, because like I say, two of those colours are fixed for the entire screen, possibly. Uh, and there's no reason for those colours to be in the first eight BBC Micro colours. Next! 